This video is brought to you by EWC Controls. The new EWC app will guide you through building the perfect zone system for your customer. Make sure to download it today on Google Play or iTunes. So I wanted to discuss that whole troubleshooting process because I thought it was kind of an interesting call because a lot of people might not have come to the same conclusion because it was still semi-functional. Yeah. Yeah. So if you will, Rabbi Joseph, please describe the symptoms of the call. Symptoms of the call were um, that uh, the system just couldn't keep up. We had kind of got in the 90s uh, for the first time this year, and uh, the customer said it would only do 75, and, and she wanted it 69, which, um, hmm. yeah. It's tough anyway sometimes. It's yeah. tough anyway, right? It's an older Goodman gas pack. Kind of the first thing I did was throw on the... And the thing's, it's not in good shape. So excessive airflow was not going to be happening. You know what I mean? Okay. So one of the possible explanations would have been excessive airflow. Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm just trying to kind of go through my thought process, I guess. Odd to have anyway. So that would be, especially odd on an older system, like you're saying. Okay. I got you. Um, so the system's old. It's... um you know, a package unit. So duct work underneath the house, the returns like right above the baseboards on the wall. Again, just going into my thinking. Okay. So, um, typically those kind of units have lower return air temperatures anyway. You follow me? Right. Cause of stack effect or stratification or whatever. Supply air comes out, it floats along the floor, it gets sucked right back in the return. So throw my gauges on it and, uh, we're running like it was, it was like a 45 degree evaporator at 73 degree return temp. So now my head pressure was high. My head pressure was like 250 and the outdoor temperature was only 80. I came the following day that it wasn't keeping up. It was in the nineties. I came the next morning. So it was only like 80, 81, 82. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, you know, and just also immediately I could feel there's not much air coming out of the condenser fan. So, okay, my, my condenser coil is plugged, but I'm still like, ah, oh, that suction pressure is pretty high for an older system with a fixed meter and device and lower than, well, not adequate, but just it's not going to have a lot of air moving through it. It would be odd, especially with a crawl space duct system on an old unit. That would be very special to have excess airflow. Yeah, so the compression ratio was decent, but still I'm like, uh with a split system, it's very easy for me to, I just pump them down and see how, how they pump down. But, and it is a reciprocating compressor. I think that's important because I hear people say I have bad valves on a scroll and scrolls don't have valves. Yeah. They can't exhibit the same problem, but you know, mm -hmm. they don't, it's not as common as with a reciprocating compressor. It's also a little harder to pump a scroll down because they don't typically pull into a vacuum as good as reciprocatings do but you can still kind of tell i mean what i'm kind of looking for when i pump one down is that you know it hits about 30 and it just really seems to stall and you know it continues to drop but it's just very slow and maybe you know 30 seconds a minute you're only down to 10 psi then you shut the compressor down and you can watch it slowly rise some rise quick others rise very very slowly but it's pretty much, and you know, I haven't completely dove into diagnosing a discharge valve or a suction valve based on reaction. So I guess it can kind of work different ways based on which valve is bad. Probably typically it's going to be the suction valve from liquid flooding, but discharge valves can get hammered too from it. Can't do any of that on this system. So I went ahead and I did clean the coil before I stuck all my probes and that um, airflow field piece stuff i had on it clean the coil fired it back up head pressure is a lot lower but the one thing that stood out to me is i had like what i think it was like an 81 degree suction line now i was clamped close to the compressor and i'm not sure if i started backing it off what that would have been like getting further and further away it is Definitely something you can see on split systems too, because I helped a, 
a different technician. And that's the one thing that stood out to me too, was his suction line was like 90 degrees and like 40 or 50 degrees superheat. And I'm like, where does this line set run? Is it through an attic? No. Is it, you know, a hundred feet? Yeah, it's pretty long and it goes outside for a little bit, but it's like, it's not even that hot out there. So where's that heat coming from, you know? And let us know specifically, where did you take the temperature? Was it right on the compressor? I would say it had like a 90 fitting coming up and then over. Mm -hmm. So it's probably like, you know, within six inches or 10 inches away from the compressor. And the compressor was not hot. That's another sign. I mean, usually you stick your hand on a compressor with leaking valves and it's scalding hot, but maybe that's a discharge valve. This one was lukewarm, but that suction line hovering at like 80 degrees when the return air temperature is 73. You had me guess like a thousand times. I was like, what is this possibly going to be? Yeah, no. We finally, we finally got to the placement of the of the, of the so to your, to your credit, I text like all my buddies and you were the one that even said compressor at all. Brian Orr actually just said, replace the whole thing. That'll fix it. That's a cop out. So you want to play the game and lose. Yeah, he was probably just too busy. <laughs> you give him too much credit. He didn't, he didn't want to look bad and lose. So he just said, change the unit. That's what you say when you don't want to play the game. <laughs> this unit is very old. You start going into joke mode. Man, this thing is awful. It's a good one, man. You got to get that good yeah. one out of there. Yeah. <laughs> you said I said compressor, so it's a compressor problem. So right. at what point did you did you move the temperature clamp and compare? How did you finally get the 100% diagnosis? I'm done. I mean, suction line 80 degrees, 42, 43 degree evaporator with 73 degree return air on an old unit. It's like, I'm done. I didn't think there was any reason to go any further with it. It's It was actually, if you remember right, it was within a half a degree of the target. Um, obviously, with a healthy compressor, it would have probably been a couple degrees under the target supply air temperature. You know, at that point, I, I knew there was only really one thing it could possibly be and just kind of let them know that uh, the system needs to be changed. It probably, you know, probably just changed the whole package unit, but... You did take Brian's advice. Well, you changed the system. He was right. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it fixed him 99% of the time. Yeah. <laughs> no one ever puts a new unit there because this unit's also doing the same thing. It's hardly <laughs> yeah. ever true. Hardly <laughs> ever. Right? It can happen. <laughs> yes. I'm always thinking about stuff like kind of that's kind of why I enjoy this job because it's almost like a CSI agent, you know, right. I this tenant. I, she's been live, you know, been there for at least two years because I've kind of worked on. I've worked on the gas pack um, several times and and in the winter, so she likes it sixty nine. It doesn't really do great with the filters. So this thing's been basically having liquid flood back for a long time, right? So I'm just kind of thinking, okay, this is making sense. Compressor was having liquid flood back, and now. You know, the suction line is is warm and barely sweating. Um, that's one thing that kind of stood out to me when I first got there. I looked down in there and that suction line wasn't even sweating. So I'm like, that's, yeah, you know, a high evaporator temperature on an old 12-seer yeah. Goodman. I'm like, something's not right here, you know? That's a strange one right there. Maybe I can put up some of the text that we had as long as I don't put up the, you know, the really controversial stuff we talked about in between on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I can put some of that up there to kind of follow along yeah. where you were, you're, yeah. you're having me guess and stuff like that. It was a lot of fun. I told Joe that I really enjoyed that. It's a lot of fun. Whatever well, that happens. I'll send you some more brain teasers. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. They, they make great conversation and that's like a rapid learning opportunity. Keep your brain very sharp. Specific. Too, you know. I do. Cause it atrophies because I just lay around a lot of time. Well, I didn't mean that. I just, meant... no, I'm telling you that's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Before we got on here, I was laying down, no. recovering from too many tacos. <laughs> yes, it was uh it was an enchilada slash quesadilla problem, but uh, mm. I'm okay now. Yeah, happy when you're that, that explains that weird text. Like, did you check the enchilada? I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> it's obvious. Oh no, sorry, Joe. Okay, never mind. 
So I'd say split systems are easier to diagnose. Just try to pump it down. Scrolls are tougher. You might want to compare your data to the the Copeland app that everyone's talking about on those. Uh, but they should still pump down. I mean, you should be able to to get, I always think like 10 PSI, no problem, like less than 30 seconds of hitting maybe 30 PSI. It continues to drop pretty quickly. Mm-hmm on down reciprocating compressors uh, are are more prone to this problem and they will definitely pull right down to zero into a vacuum uh, rather quickly as well and they should hold that same with a scroll a scroll's got a discharge check valve so when you mm-hmm. cycle that uh you know what maybe that discharge check valve would actually hold it back even if the scrolls are damaged so it may not totally take it out wow. of the equation um, by cycling the compressor off and watching the rise on a scroll. That's a good question. You know, some rushes back whenever it stops because you can always hear it, but then it stops. So I, that's that's actually a good question. I don't know. Will it stop uh, the entire flow or does some still pass back into the compressor? Right. And even if the scrolls are damaged and not seating, would that discharge check valve keep the high pressure from going back even though the scrolls are damaged? Amp draw is not always a great indicator either. I think I had eight amps. The running load amp was 10 on this unit. So you're like, well, that's, you know, it's not anything out of what you would think would be normal. It's It's higher than I would think. Yeah. Yeah. RLA was like 10.7 and it was pulling like 8.6, you know? Yeah. That's almost topped out. That's more than I would really expect it, especially in cooling. Yeah. It's, It's not a heat pump, but if it was in a heat pump, I expect a little bit higher. So, you know, the valve is just bad enough to where it's kind of just not pumping the capacity anymore. And I'm sure if we measured actual CFM, then all of a sudden, even though it, by those readings, it says it's cooling okay. You know, if we were to compare actual CFM, then you would see your capacity is down because you're not, you know, basically what I'm trying to say is by those readings, from the air probes, it would have said you're moving maybe a little bit more than nominal airflow. Um, but when you would put right. in the actual CFM, which is probably only like 800 at best on this unit, then you would see the capacity is just yes. down. The Achilles heel of the auto calculation of airflow. Any yep. problems in the system? Mm-hmm. You know, split system, just try to pump it down if it's a recip um scroll a little harder to diagnose and then heat pumps with the reversing valve in the mix it's a whole nother you know that's a that's a conversation for another day but if your suction line is warmer than the um return air temperature i mean that should set off a lot of warning signs absolutely that's really where my concern was to begin with the suction line being warmer but i sort of imagined that it was warmer the entire length of the suction line. I really wasn't imagining it warmer just at the compressor for some reason. It didn't click until we talked for a while that it was just seeping back instead of traveling the entire length of the line. That's why I was asking if it was insulated. I asked if it was running the attic because I was trying to see where it would pick up that extra heat. And keep in mind on that other split system I helped diagnose, it was taken at the line set and it was like 91 degrees and there wasn't anything 90 degrees. So it can travel a little ways, you know, and it, and again, I don't know the exact thermodynamics of what's going on inside that shell with the bad valve, but it must be kind of maybe having some pulses to where the wave of discharge goes kind of like this down the line mm-hmm. or something, because it does seem to radiate the heat at least a couple of feet, you know, on a straight cool unit, you might on a heat pump, you might not pick it up because you got an accumulator and all this other stuff in the way. Typically what you find first with a bad compressor is you find lower uh, subcooling and higher superheat. So a lot of people want to try to add gas. So you'll come to one that's almost running like normal subcooling because they finally got twice the charge in the thing. Um, so it is starting to mm-hmm. subcool yeah. a little bit, but your suction uh, and then you'll almost have normal superheat, but your saturation's like 60 degrees. It's interesting to kind of see the before and after. Um, because if you think about it with a bad compressor, you're almost just, uh, your mass flow rate's not there. So it's almost no subcooling, high superheat because the refrigerant's just not moving 
and your R22 suction pressure. I remember seeing some of these that were 94, 91, yeah. mm -hmm. just excessive. And really the only explanation can be the compressor. 94 PSI suction on a R22 system. That'd be some mm -hmm. pretty warm temperatures inside. That's an easy case to call compressor, but it's just interesting to see this not so easy scenario. Um, right, because if it can be 94, there's no reason it can't be 80 instead of 72 or 77 instead of 72 on a smaller scale. So mm -hmm. you're absolutely right. With the mass flow rate there, then all of a sudden, um, you know, because again, if you've got discharge gas kind of just getting sucked in and blown back out of the compressor internally, even though your pressure might look uh, somewhat normal, it's still not putting, you know, it's not pumping the refrigerant out the discharge line. It's Compressor is swimming in place. That's what I call it. Yeah. They're, it's doing. a good, good way to put place. it. And it's kind of like how I swim. They don't sink at the end, of course, but, you know. Like a compressor with a bad valve. <laughs> I'm like, that's what people say when I go to the pool. There goes a compressor with a bad valve. And I'm like, uh-huh, there's right. And I slowly go down yeah. where everybody gets yeah. foggier and more, you know, it starts drifting away. That's commonplace. I wish I had a nickel every time I heard that. <laughs> you would have one nickel. Yes. <laughs> one shekel. I'm Rabbi Joseph. Oh, that's right. Shekel. Rabbi Joseph. Well, thank you for taking time from the choir boys. I know they're meeting tonight. Uh, they're yeah. writing up a new page of bylaws. So I appreciate you dropping mm -hmm. by. Yeah. If anyone wants to join, just reach out to us. We'll send you over the, the 137 commandments. And uh, wow. You may or may not win. Y'all really improved upon Moses. That's hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got way down in the weeds, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe. I appreciate right. it, man. Thanks for driving by and having a good time talking about this service call. Later.